China's $62 billion project to fight water scarcity in the north. A massive network of canals, tunnels, and reservoirs. The environmental impact. Are rivers drying up? Will this project really solve China's water crisis? Droplet welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving into one of the most ambitious engineering projects in history. China's South North Water Transfer Project. This multi-billion dollar project is designed to transport billions of cubic meters of water from the south to the north, where water scarcity has been a major challenge for decades. But is this engineering marvel truly the solution to China's water crisis? Or does it come with unexpected costs? From massive displacement of people to environmental risks, this project has faced significant challenges. In this video, we'll explore why China is undertaking such a massive effort, how it works, what impact it has on the environment, and whether it's truly solving the country's water crisis. Stay with us till the end as we uncover the hidden realities of this mega project. For thousands of years, China's two great rivers, the Yangtze and Yellow Rivers, have been the lifelines of civilization. While the Yangtze River in the south flows through fertile lands and provides abundant water, the north has always faced dry conditions. As cities like Beijing, Tianjin, and other northern regions expanded rapidly, the demand for water grew beyond what local sources could provide. The situation worsened as groundwater reserves dropped, the Gobi Desert expanded, and sandstorms became more frequent. By the mid-20th century, experts realized that northern China could no longer sustain its people and industries with the limited water available. A long-term solution was needed to ensure that cities and farmlands in the north could continue to grow without facing a severe water crisis. To tackle this issue, China launched the largest water transfer project in history designed to move water across the country through a network of canals, tunnels, and reservoirs. This project is divided into three main routes. The eastern route, stretching over 1,100 kilometers, uses the historic Grand Canal, one of the oldest and longest man-made waterways in the world. Water is pumped from the Yangtze River and transported north, passing under the Yellow River through an underground tunnel before reaching cities like Tianjin. Although construction began in 2002, delays meant that the water didn't reach its destination until 2017, ultimately helping over 10 million people. The central route, which spans 1,200 kilometers, was much more challenging to build because it didn't have any existing waterways to rely on. Engineers had to raise the Danjianku Reservoir's dam by 15 meters, making it large enough to store water before it moved north through a series of aqueducts and underground tunnels. The project's scale was so massive that it required the relocation of over 300,000 people making it one of the largest forced displacements in China's modern history. Once completed in 2014, this route started supplying Beijing and other major cities with water, significantly reducing their dependence on groundwater. However, this diversion of water from the Han River has created new challenges for regions downstream, leading to another massive construction effort a 1,000-meter-deep underground tunnel to bring water from the Three Gorges Dam to replenish the Han River. This tunnel, expected to be completed by 2030, will be the longest and deepest man-made water channel in the world. The western route, still in the planning stages, presents the greatest challenge. Unlike the other two routes, which move water across relatively flat plains, this route would require cutting through the Tibetan Plateau, an area with some of the highest mountains in the world. The terrain is not only geographically difficult, but also prone to earthquakes, making construction incredibly risky. If completed, 
This route could deliver 17 cubic kilometers of water per year, benefiting nearly 100 million people in northern China. However, due to the complexity of the project, it is not expected to be operational until at least 2050. The financial cost of the South North Water Transfer Project is staggering. So far, over $62 billion has been spent, making it one of the most expensive infrastructure projects ever undertaken. However, maintaining over 3,000 kilometers of canals, tunnels, and reservoirs is a continuous expense, and the total cost could rise significantly in the coming decades. The government justifies this investment by arguing that securing water for hundreds of millions of people is essential for China's long-term economic stability. But despite its ambitious goals, the project has faced major environmental concerns. Over 600 natural rivers have dried up, disrupting ecosystems and causing water shortages in other regions. The diversion of so much water from the Yangtze River has raised concerns that it could lead to seawater intrusion, meaning salt water from the Yellow Sea could flow inland, contaminating fresh water supplies for major cities like Shanghai and Nantung. Additionally, pollution has become a significant issue. Many of the artificial waterways pass through industrial cities, where factories and businesses often dump waste and sewage reducing the quality of the water being transferred. Without proper water treatment infrastructure, the project risks moving contaminated water rather than clean, drinkable water. Another major impact has been on local communities. The displacement of hundreds of thousands of people for reservoirs and canals has led to social unrest, with many relocated families struggling to find new jobs and homes. Some environmentalists also argue that improving water conservation and investing in desalination technology might be more sustainable solutions than transferring massive amounts of water across the country. Even with these challenges, China remains committed to expanding the South North Water Transfer Project, hoping that it will ensure water security for the North for decades to come. However, the question remains, is this project truly solving China's water crisis? Or is it just delaying an inevitable problem? With climate change affecting rainfall patterns and the growing need for sustainable water management, some experts believe that China needs to find alternative solutions rather than relying solely on water transfers. So what do you think? Is this mega project the answer to China's water problems? or is there a better way forward? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into China's massive infrastructure projects, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating insights into the world's most ambitious developments.